Are you ready to be a Viking? Are you ready to drink from the skulls of your enemies? Are 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 you ready to pet fluffy sh fluffy sheep? Okay, that's in there. Oh, that's what we went with. All right. Okay. Anyway, good. This video's for you. Hey there YouTube, I am the Caffeinated Dan. I also occasionally stream over on Twitch, link in the description below. Today, I'm gonna to give you a complete beginner's guide to the game of Northgard. Check the timestamps in the description below to jump ahead to specific parts. Otherwise, let's get started with the video. Arguably the biggest draw to the game is the 13 individual clans you can play. Each clan has a certain style and usually a unique gameplay mechanic. Each clan is tied to Norse mythology as well. Famous animals like Fenrir, the Great Wolf, or Hugian and Munin, the Ravens, or the Eyes of Odin. The clan you choose will have their own set of strengths and weaknesses. The Squirrel Clan, which can provide food buffs for everyone, or the Ox Clan, that has a powerful war chief and stronger clan members. I recommend trying a few clans out and finding out which one fits your playstyle. But of course, I recommend researching other clans to know what their own strengths and weaknesses are, the more you know. One of the core aspects of the game is that there are a number of unique tiles that are randomly generated for each match that you play. These tiles on their own have special bonuses as well as a number of possible benefits for your clan once colonized. To acquire ownership of the tile, you have to colonize it, which requires one of your base resources, food, which I'll cover next. As you colonize more tiles, the food cost will increase exponentially. I recommend being very picky for which tiles you choose first, targeting resource tiles such as stone, iron, or lore, or food, versus wolf den or draugr's tomb. The idea is to plan out your economy beforehand. Integral to any RTS, scouting is at the core of this game as well. All tiles are obscured from view until a scout unveils them. This is important because you cannot expand or colonize tiles without having first vision on them. Luckily, the scout camp is one of the first buildings you can and should create. As mentioned in my tip video, don't forget to upgrade your scout camp! The upgraded scout camp allows you to scout enemy territory and see what shenanigans they are up to. Scouts can also explore ruins and shipwrecks on colonized tiles to grant some resources. Extremely useful, especially in the early game. The core of your survival on Northgard is how well you can balance your resources. The resources you have to worry about are food, wood, crowns, iron, stone, happiness, lore, and fame. Oof. Food and wood are arguably the most important resources to focus on as they determine the survival of your clan. Food can be generated naturally from your villagers, however there are a number of different tiles that can provide food bonuses such as fertile land or hunting grounds. A special use for your food you can do sparingly is called feasting, which costs an ever-increasing amount of food to improve happiness and resource production, but it can be very pricey. Food is a hot commodity. Wood is just as important as it is required to build new buildings as well as keep your clan warm. This is important when we discuss the winter mechanic. To generate wood, you need to build a woodcutter's lodge and assign villagers to it. Crowns are Northgard's gold. This generates on its own, and you can generate more through longship docks, trading posts, or marketplaces. Crowns are spent on the upkeep of your buildings as well as purchasing combat units for your warband. Iron and stone are utilized to upgrade units and buildings respectively. When using stone to upgrade buildings, the production capabilities increase by a large amount. Iron, on the other hand, can be used to recruit a powerful warchief, upgrade warband unit damage, and improve the tools of your resource collection units. Happiness is a vital resource as it determines how quickly your clan grows. This can be improved a number of different ways, such as feasts or building a brewery. It is of vital importance to keep this above zero as your clan cannot grow without it. Fame and lore play into victory conditions, which I'll explain later. Fame builds as you hold feasts, conquer tiles as a start, but there are a bunch of different ways that you can build fame depending on the clan you play. Not you, Snake Clan! Lore is a steadily accumulating resource that at certain intervals will grant you access to a buff for your clan. 
The two main ways to improve this is by having more villagers or assigning a villager to a runestone to generate lore. Each clan has their own unique knowledge tree benefits, so make sure to read up on which clan works best for you. Military paths are a unique resource when you kill neutral or enemy units. After accumulating enough, you can unlock one of the three pathways, Tactician, Guardian, or Conqueror. Once you have selected one, the other two become locked. Tactician offers a direct approach at beefing up your War Chief. Level 1 gives a 10% chance to negate an attack completely. Level 2 adds a bodyguard to your War Chief, also increasing the damage he deals and reducing the damage he takes. Level 3 allows for your War Chief to fear the enemy units for up to 3 seconds. Guardian is obviously more defensive. Level 1 summons two defensive militia. If they die, they'll be eventually replaced. Level 2 allows your towers to add to your warband cap, give a free tower upgrade yearly, and increase the amount of militia up to 4. Level 3 increases the defensive capability of all units near towers or on that tile, also increasing the amount of militia you can own up to 6. Conqueror is the most aggressive of the three. Level 1 gives you a free military lore, level 2 gives a buff when an ally dies in enemy territory, and level 3 gives a flat buff to all military units. One of the more dynamic occurrences in Northgard is the environmental events. Only one happens regularly, but others will appear randomly with only a few months heads up. The main game mechanic is winter. This occurs regularly in the last three months of the year, December to February. During this time, you will suffer reduced food and wood production. Make sure to have a bit of a stockpile in the months leading up to it. The specialty events that occur are all negative. The rat infestation event will reduce the total amount of food that you have not stored in silos by a certain percentage based off of the difficulty level of your game. Silos protect up to 300 food. When upgraded, it increases to 500. I recommend you have at least one silo in any playthrough to protect your food. Next is the Earthquake event. This event will randomly damage up to three buildings, causing them to burst into flames. It will cost wood to repair them, but it isn't a big deal. If you see this event, just make sure that you have a bit of wood stored up to prevent any serious loss. The Blizzard event occurs, obviously, in winter. This reduces all production by 50% and doubles the amount of wood burned during this time. This is arguably the toughest one to survive, as it requires you to stockpile heavily leading into winter. If you don't, your clan will start to starve and freeze, which weakens you significantly. Draugr Invasion is exactly that, an invasion. This event summons random portals all over the map and spawns one Draugr per portal. Draugr are tough units for villagers to take down, so make sure to having at least a handful of warband units ready leading up to this event is the best way to handle it. Fallen Sailors summon Spectral Warriors on one of your coastal tiles, and it incurs a minus 10 happiness penalty. Eliminate this threat as soon as it appears with your warband as the happiness reduction is massive and will cause significant issues. Lastly, the Kraken event summons a Kraken <laughs> that destroys boats and damages docks. If you are not playing the Kraken clan, make sure to stop your longship raids at this time, or you can build a lighthouse to avoid being, well, tentacle food. If you've gained some knowledge around the game, make sure to like the video and hit that subscribe button. I like to make my videos around RTSs and of course, as you can tell, Northguard. All right, let's talk about relics. Relics are a relatively new addition to the game. Relics cost 10 iron, 100 crown, and 50 wood. Each clan also has access to their own specific clan relic. Refer to your own clan for their benefit. The relics are a way to spice up your gameplay because each of them have their own unique active or passive ability. The five available common relics are Eldrimnir, which buffs your feasts and allows you to cast them more often. Then Mjolnir, which blasts one zone with electricity for one month at the cost of food and crowns. Svalin is a defensive relic that increases the defensive rating of all units and towers in the zone where the relic is. The relic can be moved once a month, and it nullifies invasion events. Jormner generates lore based off the number of zones you control. Lore can also now be spent to colonize tiles at half the cost and on a cooldown. 
Lastly, Bragaful. This relic increases the amount of crowns you generate based off of the commercial influence that you currently have, which we'll cover later in the video. It also adds an extra trade route for the commercial victory pathway. As mentioned, there are also clan-specific relics for each clan that can be built. Refer to Northgard's wiki for this information. Combat with this game is simplistic. The three main units that almost every clan has is a warrior, axe thrower, and shield bearer. They play a rock, paper, scissors mentality where warriors beat shield bearers, shield bearers beat axe throwers, and axe throwers beat warriors. Your warband is a collection of all the military units that you control. They are the only units that are capable of going outside of your territory into neutral and enemy territory, aside from dragon clan units, but that's different. Once they cross into neutral or enemy territory, the enemies will immediately engage them. Make sure not to sacrifice your axe throwers by putting them on the front line. I've done that. Each clan usually has a unique unit or units, so make sure to read up on what they do and what their strengths are. Northgard allows for a number of different ways to win, offering a ton of versatility to all types of RTS players. The first and foremost obvious is Domination, where you remove all enemy town halls from the map. Short, simple, military victory. The next victory condition is the Fame Victory. This is usually a bit easier to achieve versus Domination. It requires you to become the King of Northgard, colonizing 12 tiles, gaining a unique resource, Fame, up to 1200, and building an Altar of Kings. Fame, as mentioned before, can be earned from a number of different ways, but building up a strong economy is usually the easiest way for you to achieve this victory. Wisdom Victory is where you earn 15 lore bonuses and the final blessing, Ancestral Knowledge. Lore, again, as mentioned, can be attained in a number of different ways and is usually the slowest victory strategy, but is still capable if played properly. Of the four victories, Commercial Victory requires you to turn your Longship Dock into a Lighthouse. This grants you access to great trade routes, allowing you to build Commercial Influence, a unique resource, at the expense of Crowns. Clans that can generate a lot of Crowns quickly, such as Stag or Raven, can do well with this. Randomly generated victory conditions can occur as well. The first is Odin's Sword, which requires you to colonize a tile and forge each of the three parts of the sword at the expense of 15 iron each. The second is colonizing the tile of Yadrasil, the great tree, and holding it for a handful of months. This requires 2,000 food to colonize, which means at least three food silos. Also is protected by fallen Valkyries that hit like a Mack truck. The last randomly generated victory condition is closing the gates of Helheim. This means fighting off waves of incoming Valkyries while holding the tile for 8 months. Going into a game with a certain victory condition in mind is usually the best method, but don't be too inflexible not to jump onto other victory conditions when they are advantageous. Northgard offers a host of game modes at your leisure. First and my best introduction to the base clans is the story mode. Story mode is the main and only campaign for Northgard. This follows Rig's Saga, a tale of revenge. You get to experience each of the clans at a consistent pace as you play through its 11 missions. Next is single player, where you can play against AI and the maps are randomly generated and you're allowed to select the clan that you wish to play. For more challenging gameplay, try Ragnarok. This adds special rules to the game as well as more dynamic events. Conquest is also a new game mode that allows you to choose a clan and play through a series of set and randomly generated battles and maps, with specialty win conditions and specialty bonuses. Lastly, we have multiplayer. Play 2v2, free for all, 3v3, or 2 vs 2 vs 2 against real players. Of course, if you still have any unanswered questions, make sure to check out the official Northgard Discord, link in the description below. I've also included the Reddit as well as Northgard Wiki, where I draw a lot of my information from. The Reddit in the Discord page is there specifically so that you can speak to more experienced players. Hey, you might even see me there. I hope this video has given you some insight on how to play Northgard and uh, not left you in the cold. This is a fantastic game, and I feel it's one of the most underrated video games out there. That's why I make these videos, so people can enjoy the same games that I am enjoying. As always, I am the Caffeinated Dad, and I will see you guys around.